Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Tim Lankford, and I welcome you to our every Tuesday morning, 11 a.m. webinar. You can set your clocks to it and your calendars. This week, I have uh, a very, uh, a very distinguished guest who's joining us. You, uh, you have the displeasure, I know, of seeing me via your, your webcam. If you're, uh, you see the goofy little uh, uh, video box there, that's a live feed. We do not play games here. These are live presentations. And we have Alar Hawk from North American, a very, very important relationship to us here at Gordon Marketing, joining us to talk about doubling your premium. I kid you not. And you know the reason why I don't kid you is because I have plans for you. I, I personally, but even a higher authority than myself, has plans to prosper you. That higher authority has plans to never harm you. That higher authority from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, has plans to give you a hope and a future as hopeless as uh, so many of the families uh, that our hearts go out to today uh, with the uh, tragic events in, in Orlando or south of Orlando. No matter what your, wh which side you fall on, um, senseless use of, uh, uh, or misuse of life like that, just because somebody has decided a, a certain lifestyle is horrible. And again, my heart goes out to to the to those families and everyone involved there. How to double your premium? My goodness, that seems ridiculous, and I do not like making ridiculous statements. I do not like anything that exaggerates or misuses the truth. I am absolutely dead on when I am saying, and I'm being being saying that straight face, an ability for you to not only double, but oftentimes at least in my experience, my average life premium in 2015 was just shy of the, the previous years. My average life premium has been around $86 a month. It was $84 uh, in 2015. And that's from everything on average that I, that I sell, whether it's a single premium whole life, a final expense, mortgage protection, my life premium was right at $84 per month. On, on a monthly premium basis. Now, if I'm able to double that and, and still offer protection for my clients, wow, that's huge. And speaking probably more accurately, my average IUL premium from ones that I've written that's been over $1,000, probably the smallest ones that I've written to several children's policies, to $35 to $45 a month in children's policies. And yes, there is a wide opportunity there for you to be able to put an IUL on a child. Aller will talk about that a little bit. Uh, also make sure that you, I'm gonna put a, a real quick uh, advertisement out for our every Friday at 11 a.m. Make sure you're connecting to our conference calls. We use the same go to webinar format uh, but it's 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 a conference call, so that one's easier to even join. If you're on the road in between appointments, make sure to set aside that 11 a.m. Eastern time. Listen in to an agent who's making it happen. This week, we've got uh, Josh Sivak, who's going to really key in on how to create a lead program. You know, we've got several different lead sources, and we want to talk about that a little bit a week from today, about setting up a lead program. And we've actually added a couple stallions to our lead program that I want to be able to talk about next week also, a week from today, next Tuesday. Make sure to connect on Friday, that conference call you don't want to miss. Aller is a very good friend of ours who, like I said, one of our key relationships throughout the Gordon Marketing family across the nation. And Aller has done a tremendous job of helping us on the, the life side of, of, of the business. Don't ask him about anything on the annuity side, but guess what? We've got a tremendous support over on the annuity side as well through North American. So, Aller, she is uh, she is going to be all yours. Thank you for uh, for connecting with us today. All right, Tim. Hey, thanks for that introduction. 
Um, as Tim mentioned, I'm the dedicated marketer here on the life side for North American for Gordon Marketing, um, which means I get to uh, sit in on these webinars on occasion when uh, I get invited, and I always enjoy being on the Gordon Marketing webinars and presenting the North American story. Today we're actually going to talk about indexed universal life insurance, and I know uh, if you're not really familiar with IUL products in general, uh, many times agents tend to shy away from them because they don't maybe understand them. Today, hopefully, we're going to give you a little better feel for what an index universal life product can do. And uh, as Tim was mentioning, doubling your premium. Um, just for example, I think our annual average premium is just under $4,000 annually on the uh, IUL product side. So if you... Uh, were to take a few of those apps a year, how much would that increase your uh, commissions over the year? Um, the idea of using an IUL uh, can cover a broad range of needs that your clients are going to have. So uh, keep an open mind, and we're going to go through the uh, basics of IUL and where it can uh, help you improve uh, your commissionable target uh, going forward in 2016. So the very first thing we'll talk about here is just the disclosure page. This applies to this entire presentation. Um, just to begin, we're going to talk really at a high level here about IUL today. So we're not going to get into a lot of detail, but you know, be sure to you know take notes and if you know something uh, triggers a question with you, uh, uh, put those down in the chat section of the uh, presentation and we can try and get to those at the end of the presentation. So the agenda here, what we're going to cover today is defining what IUL is. Uh, talking about some IUL product features, what makes IUL unique, and then we'll go quickly over the North American IULs and some of the uh, 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 product hotspots where you can actually use this with your clients. So first of all, defining what an IUL is. I mean, a lot of you are probably familiar with regular traditional universal life products. Basically, uh, using a traditional fixed universal life product uh, with your clients uh, was a pretty good product up until the index or the interest rates dropped to uh, near zero here recently. Um, now we're finding that the rates of return on a fixed product are uh, not significant enough to return the uh, types of cash value that were maybe originally projected. So uh, what is an IUL then? It's, it's very similar in design to a regular traditional universal life product except in the way it credits interest. The crediting on an IUL product is based on the performance of an outside index. So uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit as we go through this, but the outside index, as it moves up, uh, the client participates up to a certain cap rate in the upward movement of that index. But if it goes down, if that index moves downward, the client never participates uh, in the downward movement. Um, we use these index accounts to uh, generate the higher types of returns that we are seeing in the IUL marketplace, um, but we're not putting the client at risk because the client never directly invests into the market. And that's an important thing to realize about an index product. The client is never directing, directly investing into the market. And to take that one step further, North American as a company is not investing directly into the market either. So we're actually taking that market risk uh, away from the client. We're not putting any of their money at, in jeopardy. So where does the IUL fit in the marketplace? It's really somewhere between a fixed universal life product and a variable universal life product. If we look at this uh, spreadsheet here, you can see a fixed universal life stated uh, growth at a stated interest rate. And again, today's interest rates are quite low, so there's not a lot of upward potential using today's interest rates in a fixed universal life product. The IUL interest uh, gains are based on the performance of that outside index. If that index moves up, you lock in those gains. And then the variable universal life is direct participation in the market, meaning you're directly investing into a, uh, a stock or a mutual fund type of an account. The next line, the fixed universal life has a minimum rate, a stated rate in the contract, um, which is usually you know one and a half to three percent in today's marketplace. With the IUL, the minimum rate is a zero percent, meaning that it will never uh, show a negative on the returns on the index product. And the variable product has no minimum; it can lose money. You can have negative years. You can actually have years where your cash value is being 
a drain based on a negative performance of the outside uh, in uh, uh, stock performance or uh, performance of that outside uh, investment. And then when we look at the last line here, the fixed universal life and the index are both non-registered products, meaning you don't have to have a securities license to sell uh, either one of them. Just a regular life insurance license is all that's required. And a variable product is a registered product, meaning you have to have a securities license to sell a variable product. So anyway, the index kind of fits right in between there, uh, gives you the upside performance, maybe not quite as strong upside uh, as the variable, but very uh, good upside performance, and taking away that downside risk that the variable product has. A definition of an IUL, a uh, difference between the, it and other products, obviously the potential for loss in a variable product. Uh, many times we see people uh, 1035-ing monies from a variable product into a IUL because they're, they've grown tired of the roller coaster. The ups and downs of the variable market at one point in time, somewhere along the way, the client just gets tired of that. Um, there's also whole life products out there which can you know, show some cash value growth. But they can be expensive, and the upside potential is limited on a whole life product as well, uh, much like you're going to find in a fixed universal life product. And in today's low interest rate environment, obviously the IUL tends to be the product of choice for those folks that are looking for cash accumulation. Benefits to the client, high growth potential. Obviously the client is looking for an opportunity to get better uh, cash value growth than they can see in a uh, traditional universal life or whole life product. Potentially lower their premiums. Again, if they're looking at a whole life contract, we can usually show a client a cheaper premium in an IUL chassis than they can get with a whole life product. And then minimum guarantee uh, rate, which in the IUL space is a 0% guarantee. We say zero is our hero because we never have to worry about the downward side of the market. The markets for IUL, um, obviously, you, first of all, you're going to need a client that has a need for death benefit because we are selling life insurance. I mean, if, if we get into talking to some of, of our uh, concepts later on in this presentation, uh, sometimes it's easy to focus on the concept of maybe retirement planning um, and forget about the need for the death benefit. Well, again, we are selling life insurance, so we want to make sure that the client's death benefit needs are being taken care of first and foremost. A uh, client that's looking for flexibility, flexibility in not only the uh, amount of premium that they want to spend, but uh, flexibility in their death benefit. They may choose to increase or decrease their death benefit as they go through their lifetime. And the final thing here is the protection uh, aspect. A uh, client's looking for uh, protection, not only the life insurance side of protection, but protection from the downside risks of the market. Um, and that's where IUL can help the client. Uh, fit into the market space. Okay, we, that's kind of the definition, the overall view of an IUL product. Now let's talk about some IUL product features um, and uh, dig into that just a little bit here. Um, IUL products are based on using index options. And what do we mean by index options? We look at an outside index like some of them that are shown on the screen here, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ. These are financial indis, indices that uh, we can peg our returns to um, without actually directly investing into those options. So utilizing, uh, let's say, the S&P 500 index, um, we buy an option on that uh, S&P 500. And if the option is up, we use our options to uh, capture the gains. If the index is down, we let the option expire, and there's a zero credit for that particular year. Um, the last bullet point there that says fixed account, the client always has the option to apply some or maybe even all of their money to the fixed account. If a client did that, they, let's say they applied all of their money to, to the fixed account, it would perform almost exactly like a traditional fixed universal life product. Um, but obviously the idea with an IUL is the opportunity for those upside gains and getting some significant cash value growth for future uh, needs. Um, one of the things that we talk about in the IUL market space is buckets. Um, basically what we mean by buckets is each payment, each time the client pays us a premium, we put it into a bucket. Now think of it as a bucket anyway. We don't have real buckets sitting around here in the home office, but um, that's, that's kind of what we, it makes it easy for the client to picture this. It's, if they pay uh, monthly premiums, 
over a year's time, they're going to have 12 buckets. Each one of those uh, premiums is handled separately because each one of them is going to have a separate start date on their index um, and a separate end date one year later to see how that index performed. So we take those uh, different annual index creditings and we add the flexibility of premium payments and we determine how many buckets each client has uh, with their IUL product. And here's an example kind of how you can use a semi-annual premium uh, using a point-to-point -point method with the S&P index. The first bucket uh, started January 1 of 2012 and it runs through January 1 of 2013. The market, the index started at 1,000, it moved up to 1,100, that was a 10% gain. And so that particular bucket received 10%. The next bucket, their next semi-annual premium came in on June 1, 2012, that goes to June 1, 2013. Let's say the index at that point was 1150. It moved up to uh, 1100 or 1050. It moved up to 110250, uh, and that was a 5% gain on that bucket. So you can see uh, each bucket will stand on its own as far as how that index performed during that annual segment. Uh, crediting methods, the annual point-to-point -point is the most popular. You have a beginning point and an ending point and basically look at just those two points in time and determine if the index is up. Uh, you lock in your gains for that particular uh, period. The last bullet point here is uh, subject to caps in part participation rates. Our annual uh, uh, accounts are all set up with 100% participation rate, so there's no upward movement or downward movement based on the participation rate. Uh, in our uh, traditional annual point-to-point. -point. Um, the cap rate, though, can vary on individual uh, buckets for the client. Um, currently, we have the S&P 500 annual point-to-point -point at a 13% cap rate. So utilizing that cap, what that means is that if the index moves up higher than that cap rate, the client doesn't participate in anything above and beyond that 13% cap rate. Um, so if it, let's say the index moved up 15% during that particular period, the client gets 13%. And some people think, well, the company keeps that extra 2% uh, above and beyond the cap. Well, it's not necessarily true. We don't uh, profit by any uh, participation above and beyond the cap. We buy our options to meet whatever cap rate that we have an options budget for. And the options seller is the person that might uh, participate in those gains above and beyond the, the cap rate, but not the insurance company. Um, the averaging method is a way to look at multiple points during the year, uh, basically every day, that, or every month or every day, depending on which averaging method you're using, uh, to actually have multiple uh, times of the year rather than just a starting point and an ending point. You might have 12 starting and ending points with a monthly averaging. Or you might have, with the daily averaging, you might have upwards of 250 uh, starting and ending points uh, based on the daily averaging. It gets a little more complicated when you start using the averaging method. But again, some people like the idea of using every uh, all those different trading days of the year to see how that can impact um, their returns. Um, so basically, you take that index growth times the participation rate, which in most cases is 100%, to create your uh, credited rate, which can possibly be capped based on the cap that is uh, applying to that particular index segment. A um, couple of considerations. We talked about the caps. The annual reset is a very important uh, feature of an IUL product. And what it means is basically once you lock in a gain for any particular index segment, it no longer can be taken away. We actually reset that uh, index and start a brand new uh, index from that point forward. So it's kind of like building a floor under, every time you have a gain, you build a floor under that. Now it can't go down below that any longer. And then the floor uh, continues to move up every time you have a gain credited to the contract. Um, here's a chart. I'm not going to really go through this one today. but. Uh, I want to get into talking about some of the opportunities for you to use the North American product uh, with your clients and uh, show some of those nice returns on uh, increasing your premiums. North American actually has three individual IUL products, the builder, the guarantee builder, and the rapid builder. And then we also have a survivorship product, 
which is insuring two lives on one policy, um, which is also on an IUL chassis. So let's talk about each one of these and how they can help you uh, grow your business uh, as you move forward here in 2016. Um, in general, North American's products are very competitive. We tend to be at or near the top of the competitive performance charts in the segments that we serve. So you can be com comforted in knowing that you're selling your clients a product that is going to be one of the most competitive in the marketplace. We also have something called variable interest rate loans available on our IUL products. What are variable interest rate loans? Basically, they allow the client to continue to participate in the index gains even though they have taken the money out via a variable loan from the contract. So what that means is if the index performs better than the uh, charged rate for their loan, they can actually make money uh, using a variable interest rate loan um, for, <clears throat> um, uh, let's say, retirement income or something uh, that they're looking at down the road. So variable interest rate loans are a very uh, key thing of having a, an IUL product that grows cash that you can actually pull money out uh, in the future years. We also have a cap rate on our variable loan at 6%, which is good to know from a client's perspective is that uh, the, the variable loan rate can't somewhere down the road get uh, to be a, a very high rate that could take away some of that leverage we were just talking about. Accelerated death benefit endorsement. This is the living benefits of the North American product design. Basically, uh, allows the client to accelerate some of their death benefit, not just their cash value, but their death benefit while they're still alive. If they become chronically ill, terminally ill, or critically ill. So those three um, features are built into the North American product design to create living benefits uh, if the uh, client becomes, again, terminally ill, chronically ill, or critically ill. The last thing here is the daily sweeps. Daily sweeps mean basically every day that a client would pay North American a premium, we go to the options market either that day or the following business day that the options market is open and purchase their options. So basically the client gets their money into their index account that much quicker. Um, and North American is the only company in the IUL market space that does daily sweeps. So we get our money to the index options that much quicker than everybody else that allows the client to uh, grow their uh, account value that much quicker by getting the money into the index that much quicker. So daily sweeps are a unique feature for North American and I think it makes us uh, stand out in the marketplace. Um, having several different index options, we talked about the different options out there. I mean these different uh, options. We have options for large cap indexes, mid cap indexes, and small cap indexes. We even have a Euro stocks index that the client can select if they want to get a little international flavor in their option selections. But um, having a lot of options available to the client uh, gives them the opportunity to pick and choose which they feel are, is going to work best for them. Um, guideline premium and cash value accumulation test, we allow both of those. Um, sometimes people think the cash value accumulation test, being that it says cash value accumulation test is going to accumulate money or cash value faster. But in reality, what we find is the guideline premium test in probably 95% of the cases you're ever going to come across is going to create the best uh, scenario for cash value accumulation. So um, just by the, the terminology there sometimes gets a little confusing, but uh, think of the guideline premium test as the one you're probably going to utilize in 95% of your sales opportunities. Um, no money required in the fixed account. We talked about if you put all your money in the fixed account, it would basically be a traditional fixed universal life product. Uh, but again, with rates being where they are today, uh, many times it's better to look to something that's going to create a bigger opportunity for you. And then competitive compensation. I think this is you know why we're all in the business because um, it creates puts bread on our table by selling product. Uh, to create a competitive compensation. I think uh, you're going to find North American's products are uh, as good or better than most companies in the compensation field. IULs, again, are designed for accumulating strong cash value. So having that cash is good, uh, but taking loans out can be a problem if you take out too much and you cause the policy to inadvertently lapse. So what we have is an overloan protection benefit 
that's built into the product. We will monitor the client's contract to make sure they don't overloan their contract and inadvertently cause it to lapse. Um, so that's a nice protection benefit for the client. There's a couple other things here. I'm not going to really go into them in detail. The last thing I do want to say is the simple submit at the bottom because North American has a electronic app which is much quicker to complete than a paper application and you can do it electronically through uh, all of our uh, product portfolio. You can utilize um, the electronic uh, simple submit application. Um, let's talk about the products here now. The builder, and I think this is uh, the best uh, product in the marketplace today, bar none, for the supplemental retirement income sale. If you're looking at a client that's uh, looking to utilize a life insurance plan to grow cash that they can subsequently take out to create tax-free retirement income, the builder is the product of choice for them. You're not going to find a product that's going to perform better uh, than the builder in that market space. Um, it's, uh, again, uh, great design for uh, growing long-term cash accumulation and then slash distribution via those variable loans uh, in the future. Um, Guarantee Builder is very much like the Builder product, only it provides a guaranteed death benefit in an IUL chassis, which is something you don't see all that often is a guaranteed death benefit with IUL. Um, if you've got a client that's really interested or concerned of having a guaranteed death benefit, basically we don't care what happens with the outside indexes. We want to make sure if I pay this premium, I will guarantee a death benefit uh, for my lifetime. That's the guarantee builder sale right there. Um, guaranteed death benefit with cash value accumulation. That's really the selling point of this particular product. It's not necessarily the one that you're going to use for um, retirement income sales, although you could use it for that. But the idea is that this is a client that has an interest in uh, growing some cash value and having a guaranteed death benefit. And then the third product is called the Rapid Builder. And as its name implies, it's good for growing early cash value. This is a product that if a client maybe doesn't have a lot of years between the time they're putting the money in and they're taking it out, let's say, um, they've got kids going to college in seven or eight years, and they, they need to put some money away today so that in those uh, few years they can actually start taking money out to help supplement their kids' college. Um, you know, there's, there's opportunities like that where you have a shorter window uh, of time that the Rapid Builder can actually be the product of choice uh, for those clients. The other area we see the Rapid Builder being used very often is in the area of smart money. Smart money sales are where you have a client that you're sitting down with them and you're going maybe through a, a needs analysis and you find out they, they're sitting on a pile of money over here that's in a, a low yielding account and you ask them what that money's for. If they say, well, that's our emergency fund, we just keep it over there that uh, we can always reach in and pull it out at, at a moment's notice if we need it. It's not tied up, it's not uh, subject to market swings. Um, we know we're not getting a lot big return on those dollars right now because they're sitting in a, a lower yielding account, but we, we want to uh, know that we can actually access those dollars if we need them. Um, and if we don't spend those dollars, we want them to go to our kids because, you know, that's, that's where it's going to go. Um, those assets are what we call smart money assets. And utilizing the rapid builder as a repository, a holding place for their smart money assets can make a whole lot of sense for the client. And I think it creates what I call a win-win-win for the client. It creates a win in number one in that it creates a liquid pool of money for the client to access um, even in, from the very first year of that contract. It's a very unique product design that allows that client to create that early uh, access to their cash value. Secondarily, it creates a competitive return. Now, when we're talking competitive returns, we're only talking, you know, CD annuity type returns. So we're not talking about big, huge returns, but the Rapid Builder can actually uh, show returns equal to or greater than the types of returns on a pure cash value accumulation as they were getting in their other uh, alternative investments. And then the third thing is, if they never need that emergency money and it ends up going to their kids, um, 
the life insurance part of the rapid builder is the part that would go then uh, to tax free to their children and it would be leveraged into a much larger benefit for their children. So there's why I say it's a win-win-win uh, for the client in that smart money uh, sale. And these are usually done as all single premium sales in that smart money area where we're just repositioning an asset from where it's sitting today into the smart money uh, sales concept with the rapid builder. Um, and again, the average sale, I guess, on, on the rapid builder is significantly higher because of those uh, single premium transfers being very large usually. We can go actually up to a million dollars annually into the rapid builder in a single premium. Um, so anyway, be thinking about that when you're uh, dealing with your clients and you see that uh, pool of money, ask them what that money's for. And if they say something like what we talked about, it's an emergency fund, you know, we just want to have it there just in case. Um, that's a great smart money sale. and. You know, as long as they're healthy and they can qualify for the life insurance, it's almost a slam dunk sale for you uh, just to move those monies over. And then the final thing is Rapid Builder is good in the business marketplace. If you, if you deal with any people that own businesses, um, buy, sell, key man, executive bonus plans, all of those areas uh, are great product solutions with the Rapid Builder. So think about that. Think about the people you know that might own a, a small business and approach them about those three key concepts, buy, sell, key man, and executive bonus, and use the Rapid Builder as the product solution. And I think you're going to find that it's a very easy sale to make. Uh, good daytime activity, by the way, too, uh, in uh, selling to business owners. Um, the last one is, I'm going to talk about this real quickly, is the survivorship product. It's designed more for you know the estate planning marketplace, people that have large estates and are looking to pay their estate taxes with pennies on the dollar. That's where the survivorship comes in. Um, it can be used for family uh, business continuation or disposition, not necessarily a buy-sell, but you've got a family business or a family farm, and you're looking to transfer it to the next generation. Um, survivorship is a great solution in, in that area. The, uh, specific bequests or charitable funding. Again, somebody has a, a special, um, maybe a church or a uh, university or maybe it's a, a, a health organization that they want to uh, create a legacy fund for. Using a survivorship is a very inexpensive way to create a legacy uh, for those charitable bequests for the client. Um, and being that this is an IUL chassis product, it does have a significant cash value accumulation component in it as well, which could, again, help to supplement the client's retirement income. So anyway, we talked about a lot of different concepts today, um, but just be aware that North American has product kits available, sales concept kits for each one of those concepts we talked about, and then even some additional ones. So. What we do is you can go to our website. You can order up uh, a sales kit. We can send it to you. You can actually go to our uh, marketing microsite, and if you want to just get the PDFs, you can just download them right there as well. Um, or if you want the hard copy, we can send you the hard copy uh, product kits as well. These product kits are great tools for you as an agent to get into a market maybe that you're not uh, completely comfortable with today, like I was talking about the business marketplace, if that's not an area you're completely comfortable with, utilizing the sales kit allows you to be uh, basically become the expert in that area because it gives you a, a client or a agent marketing guide, gives you client brochures, it gives you fact finders to follow along and ask the right questions of the business owners. Um, and again, these kits are all built kind of on the same concept is that it gives you all the tools that are necessary for you to take these concepts out to your clients and talk to them about some of these other opportunities where you can show significantly higher premiums than you're maybe seeing in the, the, the traditional sales that you've been doing. So anyway, feel free to order those, those kits off of the North American website or contact your Gordon Marketing uh, marketer and they can get those for you as well. So um, I think with that, I'm going to wrap up this presentation, but I hope everybody uh, got an, a concept or an idea out of this that you feel that you can maybe take out to uh, uh, one, two, or three maybe of your clients and just you know share some of these ideas and see if that can't create a much larger premium for you uh, in 
creating a much larger than commission uh, down the road as well. So uh, I thank everyone for joining us today on this IUL uh, journey. And I'm going to turn it back over to Tim now to see if there were any questions during the presentation. Aller, you did uh, as as normal, absolutely uh, perfect. Uh, if you noticed, if you wanted to undock your question box uh, or maybe look down in your key there, I've uh, I've tried to field some questions as they've uh, as they have come up. Um, uh, if you have any other comments to add to that, please, please do. I do want to emphasize to, to uh, the agents we have on, on the call that this is a fully underwritten product. You hear me preach on a, a, a every time in front of me basis, uh, I believe in simplified issue products. I do not want to give the insurance companies control. I, I want to give limit their control as much as I can with uh, getting my clients protected. I want to be able to help a client get protection versus find out how healthy they are. So with that in mind, I am a major proponent of IUL in specifically with North American. There are certain things that really need to be addressed to make sure if you notice in some of the questions, and, and, and I, I'll, I'll share with everyone also, if you undock your question box, that's where you can type in your questions. And uh, uh, even on our Friday, that's why we use the GoToWebinar platform on our Friday conference call, even though it's just a conference call, but so that you can type in questions and I can ask our, our agents right there when they're on the call with me, hey, John over in Idaho wants to know and, and Sally down in Florida. So that's, that's the purpose behind that. But this IUL is a fully underwritten product. So there are certain, certain additional links that you need to go to verify with your client have they ever smoked? And have you ever smoked in the last, uh, you know, 12 months, especially um, even to to a cigar? Uh, whereas I, with North Americans, friendly to the cigar, but it's kind of the occasional cigar. They do not consider that a a smoker. Um, you want to make sure have they ever had anything to do with your heart? Ever anything to do with cancer? Um, understand. Uh, no more of an emphasis needs to be made. Uh, than just what was stated, make sure you know their, their health history and they will still be rated. Um, uh, North American does a real nice job with just term life insurance also. If you need a fully underwritten, or as I say in my terminology, an FU type policy, and I say that with love in my heart, but a fully underwritten policy, uh, wow, North American, phenomenal. Absolutely, um, my my seal of endorsement right there. Uh, our maybe just a second. Would you mind uh, sharing how that uh, um, North American goes to great extent to make sure that uh, our clients don't turn their IUL, which they're trying to create a tax-free revenue stream during the retirement years, into a modified endorsement contract? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, when you're dealing with accumulation type products like we're talking about here today where you're trying to accumulate some significant cash value, you, you can get to a certain point where there's um, a level of premium that is going to create um, the policy to become a modified endowment contract, a MEC. Um, and that is a problem if we're trying to create it for cash value to take tax-free income in later years. Um, because what it does, it basically changes the tax uh, advantages of the life insurance and makes it into like an annuity taxation rule. Meaning with the life insurance, if we don't mech the contract, we can actually take tax-free uh, uh, distributions out of the policy. Whereas if we uh, make a modified endowment of the contract, we actually put too much premium in for that given death benefit. Um, then the annuity taxation rules apply to that life insurance contract, and any gain dollars are going to be coming out first as ordinary income. So we really want to avoid creating a MEC. And when we're running illustrations, we actually can see what the MEC premium is. And as long as we stay underneath that modified endowment premium, we're good to go. So again, th those are one of the things that you know your Gordon marketing marketer is going to allow you to you know 
look at some different illustrations and see, make sure that you're not creating a mech of the contract. But yeah, that's a good point is that you don't want to mech the contract if you're growing your policy for cash value that you're going to try and access later on. It's, it's, there's another question that came up, and I want to address this one too, about the puts and calls. Somebody asked a question about that. We only buy call options. We don't buy put options at all. So the only thing we're actually ever buying uh, in the options market is a call option. So we're looking at that and saying if the, uh, the index moves upwards, we, we use that call option to lock in that gain. And if it's down, the option expires and we don't uh, lock in any gains and we don't have any uh, negative uh, accumulations there as well. So that's a good question. But yeah, we, we don't do puts at all. We just do call options. And, um, and we buy those on the open market uh, through um, an options trader, and that's how we can get the upside potential without having any downside risk. Good question. And is there any need to purchase a writer, or is is one even available? Uh, Billy was asking about uh, um, are there other needs to uh, to to purchase or other other buffers to try to purchase to make sure that the uh, IUL does not become a, a, a mech? No, because the software actually will track that. If if it's a if if we try to put a premium in there that creates a mech, it's kind of, it will flag it. It'll say, you know, this is a modified endowment contract. Um, so really there's there's nothing other than the basic software that you need because the basic software will track that and look to see if the the premiums are acceptable and not creating a mech somewhere down the road. Um, and I think our uh, software actually does a very good job of that as far as tracking not only today's premium but future premiums as well. I've seen other carriers that have software that uh, basically says this contract is not a mech at issue, but then they make changes downstream and they don't test for those changes. So by by doing those different changes downstream, it could create a modified endowment inadvertently, and their other company software isn't tracking that and looking to, you know, kind of flag that and say this is going to become a modified endowment. Where North Americans does a very good job of tracking those downstream changes uh, for p potential for MEC uh, issues down the road. Perfect, perfect. And uh, Fred makes a good point as far as. Uh, um, if you are sitting with, with folks who are savers, who are really interested in retirement, you know, not only do we want to make sure that the person is going to be healthy enough on the, the ability to be able to purchase an IUL plan uh, as, as well as financially stable enough. So somebody who's, who's struggling with making their bills now, not a good candidate. But uh, now I'll typically say between the ages of 25 and 55, you know, folks who are in the 75 to $100,000 range with a little bit of flexibility with their, with their monthly income, absolute viable candidates. And then Fred's coming back and, and, and mentioning, make sure that one of the key questions to see if you have a viable IUL candidate would be to ask them about the retirement. How much are they taking advantage of if they have any matching and if they've got their, their, their matching fulfilled and now they're overfunding their 401k plan, that that is dollars that would be better utilized in an IUL. So instead of, so the rules of money, that you're able to go from, um, from a tax, a, a, a free money to a deferred compensation, but realize that that deferred compensation, if you're in investing over the matching, a better plan would be to move into a tax-free revenue stream. That's what Oliver has been talking about. Tax-free money before you put more money to overfund a 401k. A good book for that, without asking Oliver of any more of his time, um, a good book for that would be Patrick Kelly's um, Tax-Free Retirement. If you don't have that book, I've got probably 30 right now in my trunk that uh, if I've got a, a candidate, I tell them to read about Bob, uh, chat and read, read chapters 12 through 14. It's about a 20-minute ride. I had them that book, and then that, that is due to a follow-up call. Because remember, I am finding these IUL uh, during a mortgage protection or a final expense appointment. 
So I want to get that taken care of and then now lay the seed and plant the seed of let's now set up a time to talk about this index universal life. Is that a fair way to describe it, Aller, that to, to, to use better, make, better utilize the overfunded dollars and, and put them into an IUL versus overfunding a 401k plan? Absolutely. And, and you brought up a good point there. And this is something we didn't talk about yet, but North American actually has a software program that's available uh, free of charge on our website. It's called the Insmark software. There's a great comparison module in the Insmark software that allows you to compare, say, you know, if I put my excess dollars above and beyond the matching in my 401k towards this builder plan, and or if I had kept putting that money towards the 401k plan. You can do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, on a piece of paper uh, that Insmark will you know, format it side-by-side uh, -side and show you which one is actually going to come up better. Obviously, the accumulation phase, the 401k, is going to come up better because you're dealing with pre-tax monies uh, going over there and the after-tax monies are going to life insurance. But then it flip-flops. It does a 180 when you get to retirement time. All the dollars coming out of the 401k are going to be fully taxable, 100% taxable dollars versus tax-free income under the life insurance. And now, isn't that really why you're putting money into a retirement plan anyway? Which one's going to create the, both, the best retirement uh, income for you? So as long as you realize there's two parts of the equation, one's the accumulation phase, one's the distribution phase, and the distribution phase is really the important one because which one's going to give you the best retirement income, you can use that Insmark software to show you that you're better off putting the money towards the builder rather than continuing to put overfund into that uh, 401k plan. So again, yeah, that's a good point that you bring up, and we do have software that allows you to illustrate that as well. Perfect, perfect. All right, guys, thank you for joining. I've got a couple other questions that I will. Uh, Fred is coming back and saying, Insmark rocks. Um, and uh, I'll have a couple questions I will also answer offline here, folks. Um, thank you, Aller. Uh, you 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 were you uh, performed exactly as I was hoping that you would, and uh, um, if you are interested in uh, the IUL world, um, I think it's a phenomenal error, arrow to add to your quiver. Absolutely uh, strategic way to be able to continue to be an, an elite professional. Um, contact your marketer. You may contact me. Uh, we can get you the contracting to uh, to get you started with North American. Friday, 11 a.m. Don't uh, don't fail to uh, connect. You will uh, be able to enjoy uh, Josh talking about how to create that lead program, and I will dovetail off of Joshua on Friday. On Tuesday, I'll be talking a little bit more about lead program, but also uh, I'm going to also key in on some underwriting issues. We've got some folks who are who are struggling with uh, getting their business placed, and we should never struggle with that. Uh, you should know, I'll say, I, I have consistently been the last few years over 90% in placement, uh, um, and hands down, you should know whether that person's going to be approved or not before you leave that home if you really know your underwriting. But we'll go over that some more on uh, a week from today. You enjoy your day. Please know that you are blessed because you woke up this morning and you were given another chance. I like that attitude. You were given another chance by you waking up this morning and taking a breath. A lot of folks can't do that this, today. Go be blessed. Do what you feel like is the, the right thing to do when it's in question. Default to A. Do the right thing that you know to do. Enjoy your day. I look forward to connecting with you guys on Friday.